Hello and welcome back everybody, it's your boy Zero back with some history buff reacts Weirdest weapons in the world, now hopefully this is going to have some history behind it I'm sure it will, I'm hopefully hoping that they've got some good ones on here I've got a few in mind that I hope they bring into this, we'll see But for now, let's get to it Ever burning fire? Armed icebergs? Laser guns? These may sound like imaginary weapons straight did they say armed icebergs? Oh, I think I might know what he's referencing now, actually. I'll see if I bring it up on them. Straight out of the pages of a comic book or a sci-fi novel, but these are all examples of very real and very weird weapons from the past and the present. History is full of examples of surreal weapons that actually existed, not to mention all the examples of weird weapon failures. What are the weirdest <laughs> historical weapons that we know of? What weird weapons are we using today? What weird... I like the idea of putting a Swiss army knife on the end of a gun and thinking, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Weirdness awaits us in the future. Imagine yourself as an ancient Roman sailor preparing to launch a fierce naval attack on your arch rivals, the Greeks. As your ship approaches the city walls, you watch closely for any signs of movement. The Greeks are well known for their unique defense strategies, including the much feared Greek fire, Greek an fire, incendiary yep. compound that the Greeks have been known to throw at invaders in clay pots or even through tubes, creating an ancient flamethrower. The actual ingredients in Greek fire are a well-guarded secret even in modern times. No one knows exactly what the sticky compound was made. Yeah, literally nobody knows what it's made from. They've tried, they've tested it so many times, they literally have no idea what it is. But you do know that this ancient version of napalm can stick to anything and burn for an incredible amount of time, and that not even water can extinguish it. Yes, Greek fire is definitely on your mind as your ship gets closer and closer to the city walls. This time though, there's something new in store for you. Towering over the wall is a huge catapult-like structure with a complicated series of pulleys. Before you can figure out what it is, a okay. rope thrown from the top of the wall lands on the deck of the ship next to you. The hook on the end digs firmly into the ship's rail, and you hear a loud groan as the monstrous structure comes to life. Before your eyes, the ship next to you is raised up out of the water, men and supplies sliding along the deck and falling overboard. Then, with a crash, the ship falls back into what the water, the founders and sinks. The claw of huh. Archimedes claims its first victim, and the rest of your fleet the scrambles to escape its reach. If ancient sea battles sound hmm. terrifying, you're not going to like this. If you were a warrior in medieval Europe, preparing to do battle for your liege lord, you'd have your mm -hmm. own problems to deal with. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is brutal, bloody business, and as a foot soldier, you only have your sword and shield to protect you in a melee. If you were very lucky, you might have an extra secret weapon in your arsenal. A sword breaker was shaped like a dagger, but its blade was full of deadly teeth that could hook onto your enemy's sword and break the blade clean in half with one quick motion. Yeah, these things were not common. Like, these were very rare. Um, there were, there's a, not much evidence of these being used. Um, whether they just weren't particularly great at their job or something, I don't know. But they were definitely used, and they were definitely, in some parts, definitely effective. Literally, as you can see on there, you'll see the little notches in the blade. Little notches going up and down the blade. The blade will get stuck in those notches. And all you need to do is, I think it was a quick like slash motion, and it would essentially just snap the blade. Which is an interesting thought, but... Just imagine doing that in the middle of a heated fight in the middle of a battlefield. A bit risky. Leaving him defenseless. Not many medieval warriors could afford the luxury of an extra weapon like a sword breaker, so many may do with a homemade pair of leather gloves reinforced with iron rings or even spikes. That's right, we're talking about medieval brass knuckles. You may associate them with gangster movies and rap videos, but these types of fighting gloves have actually been around since ancient times. If yep, you were a gladiator absolutely. in ancient Rome facing an opponent in the ring, you might have nothing to defend yourself but with a cestus, a series of thin yeah. leather thongs wrapped around your hands with small bits of iron or lead attached. Ancient Japanese warriors had their own version of ancient brass knuckles called a teko. As a knight on horseback, you're that a one. bit okay. better off than your foot soldier friends, but you're far from safe. For your higher vantage point, you'd be keeping a close eye out for any enemies carrying a man catcher. A man catcher? Okay, that one I've not heard of. That thing looks absolutely lethal, though. <laughs> Holy crap! Imagine that getting stuck in you. 
Jesus. This device featured a spiked collar on a long wooden pole and would be used to pull you off your horse by the neck and drag you into the bloodbath below. Warfare changed wow. with the advent of guns. Soon every soldier was equipped with firepower, but there were still plenty of weird weapons to be found. An early 18th century weapon called a puckle gun was unique yes. because there were two different designs. One that was capable of shooting typical round bullets as well as one that could fire square ones. If you were tasked with yeah, operating the puckle gun, bullets. you would use the square bullet variety against your Muslim enemies, since it was thought that square bullets would hurt more and would therefore convince the infidel Turks of the superiority of Christianity. The more civilized round that one. bullet gun would be saved for use against your fellow Christians. The 20th century witnessed that two one. unprecedented world wars, and these brutal wars spawned countless new and weird weapons. Picture yourself as an artilleryman in the German army during World War I. Your unit okay. is posted deep in the western front near Paris. Is this going to be... I think I might know what this is. I'll let him continue. Paris, you've been hearing a lot of rumors about a new cannon that's on its way to the front lines. It's said to be the biggest gun in history, capable of launching shells into the stratosphere. It's called the Paris gun because Paris it will gun. apparently be yep. able to hit Paris from your position, an astonishing 80 miles away. When the Paris gun arrives a few days later, you can see that the rumors are true. It's so big that it's brought in on train on a specially made rail car. Its barrel measures almost 70 feet, and each shell weighs more than 200 pounds. When the orders come down from your superiors, you're excited and nervous to learn that you'll be a part of the crew that will be the first to fire the Paris gun. <laughs> you're just guy in the background just fainting out of excitement, like, I'm going to fire the Paris gun. <laughs> Still recovering from the deafening sound of the massive gun firing when you get the confirmation that the shell has landed near your target in Paris. It took a full three minutes for the shell to travel the 80 miles to Paris. It reached heights of 25 miles at its peak trajectory. As impressive That's as madness. the Paris gun looks, though, you're dismayed to find out that it's wildly inaccurate. It's almost impossible to accurately aim such a big gun, but it yeah. certainly has an impact on the morale of your enemies, so it's not a total waste. In the wake of these world wars with mistrust between This is the problem, though. Gun weapons, especially when it got into World War One, they were prized on their effectiveness, not on their ability to scare. Which is why gas was used so often, because gas was effective. But, yeah, I can imagine the Paris gun being decommissioned pretty quickly after it came into came into uh, force. Countries at its peak, militaries around the world are ramping up their espionage activities. As a covert operator trying to infiltrate an enemy regime, you have weapons that wouldn't seem out of place in a modern James Bond movie. You might be issued a small caliber mini pistol, cleverly designed as a flashlight, a tube of lipstick, or even a ring. As inventive as these hidden guns are, it may be hard to imagine them as anything other than spy movie fodder, but they could be all too effective. In London in 1978, a KGB agent successfully used an umbrella gun that shot poisoned pellets to assassinate a target. As a modern day soldier, poisoned no doubt pellets. that you're grateful you don't have to participate in hand to hand combat or trench warfare or face yeah, any of the weird historical weapons we've covered so far. But modern soldiers have weird modern weapons to deal with. Today's technology advances have led to the creation of some truly weird and futuristic weapons. Put yourself in the shoes of a modern soldier for a moment. You're just as likely to be deployed against your own rioting countrymen than against foreign enemies. And even soldiers stationed overseas will interact with civilians more than armed combatants. That's why modern weapons are designed to be non-lethal. More often than not, you're aiming to incapacitate, not to kill. We are familiar with the taser stun guns favored by police officers and suspicious mothers everywhere. As a modern soldier <laughs> called in to control a large-scale riot, you might use a taser shockwave to keep that angry mob in check. Essentially a wall of taser stun guns, I've the shockwave is capable yep. of protecting a 20-degree arc with six tasers. Each shockwave has a 25-foot range, and they can be combined to cover a larger area. If somehow the shockwave isn't effective in dis- I mean, that, that on its own sounds scary enough. I might have been hit by that. I'll knock you out for a good while, at least. Pursing the crowd, you also have the active denial system at your disposal, also known as the pain ray. This futuristic weapon works on- Yeah, this thing's weird. The pain ray, I've not figured out how this works, and so hopefully they'll go into it. The same principles as a microwave oven. It emits a type of electromagnetic radiation that creates a brief but intense burning sensation when it comes into contact with human skin. This weapon is powerful enough to stop the angriest mob, but it's non-lethal and was designed for crowd control, not combat. As a modern soldier, you're getting- You're firing microwaves at somebody. That just- <laughs> You're cooking somebody so they go away. Interesting logic. ...to live out every sci-fi nerd's fantasy. 
Laser technology is no longer science fiction but science fact. Laser weapons work by harnessing and focusing light rays to incapacitate enemies and disable electronic systems. The LAWS ship-mounted cannon is powerful enough to scramble electronic systems, blind enemies, and even damage boats, aircraft, and drones. There's even a laser rifle, the phaser stun gun, that lets you dazzle and confuse your enemies, but more testing is needed before the gun is widely used and lasers replace bullets completely. When modern weapons seem like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, it begs the question, what weird weapons will the soldiers of the future be using? Maybe more importantly, what futuristic weapons might the Zeti Reticuli aliens be developing to use against <laughs> us in their quest to harvest our brains? If the idea of Not being a brains. soldier in the future scares you, this might ease your mind a bit. It sounds like something straight out of a Harry Potter movie, but scientists are actually working on developing an invisibility cloak. They think oh. they've almost got it figured out. Our vision works by detecting light bouncing off an object, yeah. and a special coating under development could make it possible to absorb or redirect these light waves, making you invisible to your enemies. Of course, not all brilliant ideas turn out to be a brilliant success. Although plenty of weird weapons exist now and in the past, <laughs> there are even more examples of weird no, weapon failures. No. There is a long and frankly unsettling history of militaries attempting to weaponize animals. During the 1960s, the CIA had the brilliant idea of turning cats into covert listening devices. The idea was, was that the cats would be able to get thing. close to foreign adversaries without being detected. So oh, scientists no. implanted radio transmitters, microphones, and batteries inside the cats' bodies to gather top-secret intel. Needless to say, it didn't go well. Not only were there countless issues with the technology and the implantation process, but anyone who has ever had a cat can tell you just how impossible it is to train them to do what you want. During World War II, the Soviet military strapped explosives to dogs. This is terrifying. No, this is absolutely terrifying. The I'll let him speak. I'll let him do it. Trained to search for food underneath tanks. The idea was that the dogs would see the enemy tanks and, expecting a tasty meal, dive under the tanks where the bombs would detonate. However, the dogs had not been trained with live tanks and were not used to the chaos and noise of battle. If you were a Soviet soldier, you would have been dismayed to see that the dogs, understandably terrified, ignored the tanks and ran straight back to your lines with their deadly payload. That isn't strictly true. That one isn't strictly true. Yes, that did happen. But what actually, what is more commonly theorized is that because the dogs were trained on the T-34 tanks that the Russians had at the time, um, when they went into live combat, they recognized, they didn't recognize the shape of the panzers. They only recognized the shape of the Russian tanks. So what would happen was they would run onto the battlefield, or be released, whatever. They wouldn't recognize the Panzers, they would recognize the T-34s and the T-20-somethings, the lighter tanks. They'd be like, oh, there's food under those tanks. Where do you have, what do you think happened after that? A much more humane version of animal weaponry was the robot dog named Big Dog. Built by Boston okay, Dynamics in 2005, it looked like this was the next big thing oh, in military supply this. transport. Yeah, I do know this. But after initial testing showed that its gas engines and hydraulics were way too loud, Big Dog was put into storage and Boston Dynamics was sold to Google. During World War II, Britain was desperate for a solution to the problem of German U-boats, which were sinking military and even civilian ships at an alarming rate. Enter Project Habakkuk, eccentric inventor. I feel disappointment whenever this comes up, Habakkuk. Habakkuk was such a weird, weird project. Jeffrey Pike's plan to construct a massive aircraft carrier out of a new material he called Pikecrete. Pikecrete was a mixture of ice reinforced with wood pulp, and this new material was lightweight and very strong, allowing for a much larger ship with thicker walls that could withstand U-boat attacks. The war ended before Pike gained any real support for his design, so we'll never know if Pikecrete would have lived up to its claims. As weird as some of these failed weapons sound, humans have clearly been trying out crazy weapons for centuries, and things are only going to get weirder in the future. So which weird weapons of the past are you most surprised by? What do you think of the future of weapons? Which weapon fail most surprised you? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, the Habakkuk was an interesting one, an aircraft carrier made out of wood and ice. Um, there's actually a story of that one. Um, when they went to test it, they took it to a test or to a presentation and they decided to test it. So somebody in the room pulled out the pistol and shot it. The bullet ricocheted off, 
hit the wall. Oh no, sorry, it ricocheted off the pyrocrete and hit somebody else in the room. I don't know if it killed them, but to just be there at the presentation and just see it just bounce off and hit somebody else in the room, that's kind of stupid, really. They thought it was a brilliant idea, I thought this might work. But, as I said in the video, the project was never actually finished, so we'll never know how effective it actually was. But yeah, that's been weird it's weapons in the world. If you've got if you've got any other weird weapons that you can think of, pop them in the comments below. So I'd love to hear it from them. I already know a few strange weapons that they came up with. If you've got any more, please let me know because I'd love to read. I'd love to research them. This is my specialty: warfare history, and some of the stuff that people come up with in the history of warfare is so strange. Um. And as a final note, as I said in the last video, gaming won't be making the return to this channel for a little while. Um, I'm working on getting the channel up and ready to go. Um, however, I will still be doing gaming over on my Twitch. If you head down below into the, the video description, my Twitch link is there. Pop along. I do a Twitch stream every Monday until further notice and every Wednesday. And there'll be a multitude of games. Maybe a solid game, maybe some FTS, who knows. But just to see you there would be great. But for now, I've been Zero. This has been the weirdest weapons in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.